really just don't think so. I think this is a total coincidence. Kind of going right. It exploded when I turned them on. Oh my goodness. Hey, my name is Ben, thanks for stopping by. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys a really easy way to connect power to your house using a suicide cord. It has two male ends, you plug one end into your generator and the other end into any receptacle and it should work just fine. Actually, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't do that. In fact, I do not have a suicide cord here. I have a very unique cord, which should allow us to do something that I've been wondering about for quite some time, and that is, can we use two separate 120 volt sources to power an entire house? The one caveat with this is that we are not going to be able to power our 240 volt circuits, and the most we're gonna be able to power without using a transformer that actually steps the voltage up is going to be 120 volts. Let's go ahead and get started. Is it okay if I turn the power off for a little bit? I'm in the middle of making supper. Oh, well it will only be off for like a few minutes hopefully. Um, and then it'll come back on and it will be being powered by an alternate power source which will be really cool. Hey Google, how much power are we using? The annual global energy consumption is estimated to 580 million terajoules. <laughs> anyway, okay, so uh, the power is going to go off and then it's gonna come back on and everything's gonna be fine. What we have here is a NEMA L14-30R receptacle. This is what you would see on most 30 amp generator cords that would attach into the inlet box at any property. But instead of having another 30 amp plug, we have two standard 120 volt plugs. So what I'm hoping to be able to do is to take these two plugs, connect them to our two power banks, and in theory, we'd have the combined capacity of these two to serve the property. This power bank right here is only gonna serve essentially every other leg in our 240 volt panels, and this one will serve every other leg. I do wanna use my electrical meter and just test these plugs and see if I am correct in my assumptions. We're just gonna throw our electrical tester into continuity mode. I need like three more hands and then this would be perfect. So I should be able to go from ground right here to ground and have continuity. We do, and we do. Okay, so those are all connected. Now we'll go from our neutral prong to the neutral on each one of these, which should be this one and this one. Now for the more interesting part, I've got this connected to one of the two legs of 120 volts, and we're gonna check to the hot prong on these two plugs. Oh yeah, we have continuity right there. Now we shouldn't have continuity over here. Okay, we do not. This one down here should be for this one now. We have continuity but not over here. Okay, so this looks like it's wired exactly as I expected it to be, so I feel confident now moving to the next step, which is gonna be connecting it to our power banks and then testing the voltage right out of the end of this plug. Now, my question for you guys is, what do you think we're gonna have between the two hot legs? Because we're gonna have two separate 120 volt sources powering this uh, plug here, and we'll have 120 volts here and here, and if you measure from either one of those hot legs to ground or neutral, we should have 120 volts. We'll go ahead and check this really quick. I'm kinda curious if our ground and neutral are bonded, and they are not bonded inside of this cord, which is a good thing, but they will be bonded as soon as we connect this to our inlet box right over here. So we should have 120 volts connected right there, and 120 volts connected right here. Now we're gonna go to volts alternating current. So from the hot leg to ground from one side, we're getting kind of a weird voltage, 36 volts, and that's because uh, there is no neutral and ground bonded together. Uh, in the power source, or at least that side. Same thing on the other side. So, that's a good sign. Now we'll go from the neutral to the hot. 120 volts, 120.3, and 120.7. So this is working exactly as I thought. Now the most interesting part, predict what you think this voltage is gonna be. Comment down below, pause the video if you want. And uh, I'm guessing that there's gonna be no voltage between the two hot legs here, but we'll find out. Oh my. Hmm, that's really weird. Well, comment down below if you understand what's going on. We're gonna proceed with the experiment. What I'm gonna do in order to protect the equipment that is 240 volts, is we're gonna shut off all the 240 volt breakers uh, feeding different things on this property. That way we don't have this weird voltage going to them. All right, so I've got my 240 volt loads inside disconnected. Let's go ahead and disconnect these ones. We just have this one 240 volt load right here. And then over here, we've got bubbles in case you get bored while you're working on your panel, you can use those. If you want to power your property with a generator, 
this is by far my preferred way to do it, using a power inlet box and a breaker interlock kit, which I'll show you in just a second. So if you wanna learn how to do that, I will link to that video right up here at the top of the screen or in the description, and I go through the detailed process of how to install this exact box. But right down here, if we flip this open, you'll see we have some prongs sticking down. This is for that 30 amp cord that we were talking about earlier. It's kind of sketchy that those are sticking down right there because if those were energized, theoretically you could touch them. But the interesting thing is you can't turn those on unless you have power disconnected. And right now this uh, power inlet box essentially goes to nowhere. All right. This is the only proper way to do this where you turn off the power coming from the utility. Sorry, Naomi, hope you're done cooking supper. Oh, but you know what I forgot to do? Shoot, I forgot about it. But what I actually wanna do is check the energy usage that we have right now on the Sense Energy Monitor before we turn this on. So I'm actually gonna turn this back on. I'm gonna check what our current power usage is so that I know if we're gonna overload our uh, power banks uh, immediately or not. Oh, wait, wait for that, let's call Ruben back and see what he needed. Hi there. Hey, sorry, Mr. Call, what's up? Um, I was just wondering if your property was burning down earlier. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Uh, we actually uh, were burning some branches and stuff, and uh, I even <laughs> called in the burn permit so that they wouldn't come and try to spray water all over my house. It just looked like, from my angle, it looked like your garage was smoldering super bad. <laughs> well, thank goodness it's not, but the siding did peel off. I wonder if that's because of the smoke, or maybe there was never siding on it. Maybe only the siding burned off. Oh yeah, only the siding burned off the garage. Yeah, I actually called the fire department first. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so this is the Sense Energy Monitor and we can see how much power we're currently using. So we're currently using 540 watts about. So I'm not concerned about that being too much for our power supplies. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this. I'm guessing almost immediately then this is gonna, oh yeah, grayed out. So our power's off right now. The Sense Energy Monitor is not gonna work because we're gonna leave the 240 volt breaker that it's attached to turned off. So right now we are off from the utility and if we slide up our interlock kit here, that's gonna prevent us from turning on uh, this breaker, which is extremely important because that prevents us from back feeding electricity onto the utility. You should never use the suicide cord that I briefly mentioned earlier because you could potentially leave the main breaker on and back feed to the utility, potentially injuring or killing a lineman. Three, two, one. First of all, you can see that the lights did come back on in the house. So that indicates to me that something is happening. First, the EcoFlow. It looks like it's only outputting five watts. So there's not a whole lot of power being used on that leg, which is interesting. On the big blue over here, we are currently outputting 95 watts. Let's go inside and see if there's any strange things happening with the power source. Hi, you guys. Did you just turn them all off or did they all not come back on? They all came back on, but they liked it. So they asked if they could turn all the lights off to continue using their lantern. Oh no. Uh, let's see. So this one looks like it's going to turn on just fine. So those are fine. And okay, that one did trip. So let's go downstairs and look at uh, why some of these didn't come back on. I wonder if it's the ground fault. None of these breakers appear to be tripped. So maybe our plug came out outside. Let's go check that. Yeah, it looks to be plugged in just fine. It's definitely this one that's working. This one's not. So something's weird here. All right, I just switched which power bank is supplying that end of the cord and it looks like it is working now. This one's outputting the power that the other one used to be. So I think we must have a loose connection or something between here and where it connects to the house. Now I'm gonna take this panel cover off. This is essentially going to create the situation where I would have the ability, if I wanted to, to turn on the utility at the same time as my generator is turned on. So we're not gonna do that, but just understand by removing this, I'm removing this safety measure that's preventing that from happening. All right, here we are inside the panel. You can see we've got our sense energy monitor down there, our sense energy monitor clamps up at the top. And in theory, we should have 120 volts on each leg of our breaker right here that is coming from our power source. So let's go ahead and test that. Test from our first hot leg to our neutral slash ground bar. 120 volts. Let's check the other one. So we're getting 120 volts in on both of them. So from here, we should have 120. And here, here we have zero. If you found this video to be interesting so far, I would really appreciate it if we earned your subscription and 
click that bell to turn on notifications. Based on that testing, we know that our cord is fine because we're getting our voltage to the breaker, but for some reason I'm not getting the voltage from the breaker to the rest of the system. So uh, Naomi just said that it's time for supper, so let's go have supper. Super weird though, this is, this is completely unexpected. I thought that this was just gonna work. At least one leg is working. So half of the power is on. Roast beef for dinner, huh? And our garden potatoes. Garden potatoes. Um, I'm having technical can difficulties. Can we rewind and play the part where the power is only going to be out for a very short time. Well, it will only be out for like a few minutes, hopefully. But it's not out all the way right now. You have half True. of it. Some things work. <laughs> this is like your classic Midwestern meat and potatoes. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> well, guys, um, be prepared with the lantern, okay? Because the power is going to go out while Dad fixes the issue, all right? Okay. All right, let's get this thing figured out. We've got the Marauder 2. I don't know if any of you guys have seen this, but this is a really fun light. But look at that dust from Harvest. All right, we're going to turn this off, and now we're gonna go ahead and test this breaker to see if it's the breaker itself that's having an issue. Pull it off, and we're gonna turn this thing on, and by turning this on, we should have power on these two ends of the breaker. All right, so we should have 120 volts from the neutral bus to here which we do. Let's check the other one. We have nothing. So we actually have a bad breaker, guys. How strange. What I'm gonna do right now is just disconnect power from our power inlet box right back here. And we're gonna hook up a new breaker. I'm curious if, uh, if it's possible that we like wrecked this breaker, but I really just don't think so. I can see some evidence of critters kind of going right, Ugh! scared me half to death. It was a leaf that like just Sorry. When you hear like a weird sound while you're in an electrical panel, it really is freaky. Okay. Uh, anyway, bad breaker. Let's go grab a different one. All right, here we go. I have a breaker. It was just being used in a different location. And if we go to our continuity mode, we can test when it's on between one leg and one leg. Move it over. And we have continuity on both sides. So we know this breaker is good. So I think the other one just got damaged by something. We'll open that thing up. Just a really weird deal. We'll go ahead and snap this in. So now we should be able to reconnect our power inlet box. Okay, so that's on there. Main breaker off and we're going to turn on our power supplies in three, two, one. All right, we're still here. If somehow that fried the breaker, which I don't think is the case, then we would not have 120 volts from here to here. I'm not sure what's going on with my tester there. 120 volts. I mean, we're not getting 120 volts there before. 120 volts. So we should have power to both legs right now. So this is working correctly. I'm expecting to have zero volts between our two main legs here. Let's just check this. So we are still getting really random voltage between these two. We are operating fully off of those two power banks, which is ridiculously cool. Big Blue right now is outputting 230 watts. And over here, the EcoFlow is outputting 90 watts. Looks like we've got nine hours left remaining over there. And this one, 4.9 hours. So we've got quite a bit of time to go. I went ahead and turned the breaker on that feeds the internet. And so the internet was able to come back on in the Wi-Fi and I wanted to see if the Sense Energy Monitor would work. And it's interesting because the Sense Energy Monitor pulls from each leg of the 240 volts. And if you look at this indicator light on this surge breaker right here, you can see the power is like pulsing on and off. Now I'm guessing that's the difference in like the frequency between the two power supplies that we have right over there that we're getting 240 volts some of the time, but not uh, other times. So it goes slowly on and then back off again. And I was a little concerned that maybe that was gonna fry the Sense Energy Monitor. But after waiting a few minutes, it actually came right on and it's giving us a reading. You can see right there, it's telling us that we're using 
839 watts. If you guys are interested in picking up a Sense Energy monitor, uh, I'll put a link in the description and you can get $25 off with the discount code Benjamin at checkout. So it's been kind of a useful device. Check it out if you're interested. Just kind of fun to be able to keep track of your energy usage. So right now everything, everything that's lit up is being lit up from the battery packs. Except the candles. I just found something really cool while using the Sense Energy Monitor app. You can see we've got our current wattage that is being used, and that's in total between the two legs. But if you want to see more details, all you have to do is go into Settings, My Home, and click on Monitor. You'll be able to see the exact voltage of each one of your two legs. You can see we've got 119.9, 119.9, they're about the same right now and we can see how many watts are being drawn from that particular leg. Just thought I should show that to you because, man, just really interesting being able to keep track of your exact power usage. We're still running just on battery power, which is kind of crazy and super fun. So let's open up that bad breaker and see what's going on with that. Wait, isn't this the proper hammer? Oh my goodness. Wow, okay, I totally see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, this is the wildest, wildest thing. Look at how damaged it is. Yeah. It exploded when I turned them on. Oh my goodness. I'm just kidding, I smashed it with a wrench. Honey! <laughs> Sorry, okay, but there is something really cool. <laughs> Come over, come over here and look, look in the light. So right here you can see we've got some kind of debris from some insects. So right on the end of that little oh, yeah. circle part, uh -huh. see how there's like- That dirty stuff? That's what caused us to not be able to turn the power on from the second leg, which is just super interesting. I didn't know that breakers were that susceptible to insects so getting into them. So can we like clean it off, like wipe it off? Yeah, we could. We could clean it off and oh, reassemble yeah. it. Oh yeah, scrapes, it scrapes off. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. In theory, if I hadn't smashed this thing, I mean, if this hadn't exploded. <laughs> Coffee pot. Ooh, that's a big load. Mm -hmm. 1,200 watts we're trialing right now. And that's from the bigger one. The big blue can handle up to 2,000 watts. The smaller one, I think, is only like six or 800 watts. So a good thing the coffee pot was on this side, otherwise it would have just kicked the power out. So it totally does work to use two separate 120 volt power sources. The only caveat is turn off your 240 volt circuits. I definitely would want to have uh, both of these attached and not just leave one dangling because I feel like there is a chance that you could get some voltage on that second set of prongs, especially with like power going through like a 240 volt source and perhaps back down the other side. Really strange how we ran into that bad breaker. I Troubleshooting is always good, so hopefully you learned something in that process of figuring out what we had going on. If you guys have any thoughts or comments about this video, put them down below. I'd really be curious to know if you guys have uh, experience or understanding, and especially like the way the 240 volts was showing up some of the time and then going back to zero and then back to 240 volts again. My guess, like I think I said earlier, is that the frequencies weren't matching up quite right, and so depending on where you were at in that cycle, uh, it was showing more voltage or less. Uh, but really just kind of intriguing the way that worked. I will link to this cord in the description as well as anything else relevant, including the Sense Energy Monitor and a few of the different generators that I'm a fan of, as well as some different power banks uh, that might be good options for your situation. If you don't have one of these lithium ion uh, battery backups, they actually are super handy. And I like the idea of using them in conjunction with a gas generator because you can charge these things up run a gas generator for like a shorter amount of time and then switch over to using these for a while while uh, you can shut off the generator and give it a rest. Hit the thumbs up button for Naomi and the kids for putting up with me in this whole process. Well, I guess we made it to halftime so we'll be able to watch the second half of the game, but this was kind of a fun adventure to go on. Thank you guys for watching with me. We'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya. Tony Gonzalez, we got touchdowns, guys.